Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I wanted to go over one of the more obscure stories in the Jurassic Park franchise. With the release of Jurassic World in 2015 came our introduction to the now massively popular Raptor Squad. The four dinosaurs that were a part of the special engine program known as Ebris the Integrated Behavioral Raptor Intelligence Study. Now, of course, long before Blue and the others made their debut on the big screen, there were other ideas to bring in trained raptors in a variety of different ways. Possibly the most well-known and talked about of these undeveloped stories was the John Sayles script for Jurassic Park 4, in which we did happen to focus on some trained dinosaurs. However, the insanity meter was cranked all the way to 11 with a good dose of mounted guns, parachutes, and other ridiculous ideas as well. But even before that mid 2000s script was turned over to Spielberg, there was actually a far older and more complete representation of raptor and human bonding that barely ever gets talked about. Way back in 1993, before the first Jurassic Park movie had even hit VHS, we would get a story that was being marketed as the first official continuation of the hit movie. This story from Topps Comics featured Alan Grant, Ian Malcolm, Ellie Sattler, and even Robert Muldoon returning to go on an adventure to capture some escaped raptors that had made it off of Nublar and onto the mainland. During this series, three velociraptors are soon captured and put into cages by one of the story's villains, a drug lord named Raphael. During the course of their imprisoning, Raphael forces Dr. Grant and Dr. Sattler to help take care of the raptors and make them do his will. He does this by applying high voltage shock collars around two of the more healthy raptors' necks, while the dinosaur experts mend the third creature back to health. You see, after having suffered from a pretty bad gunshot wound, this animal wouldn't be allowed to quote, train, until after it had been physically ready to endure the electrical pain. What results is this weaker raptor, which is named Celia, bonding with Alan and specifically Ellie Sattler. The other two creatures named Betty and Alf are sent out on wild missions to go kill intruders to the drug lord's domain, and even slaughter politicians in broad daylight while the public screams wildly in the streets. Basically, this story boils down to Alan and Ellie having to deal with the eventual escape of all three of these animals, with Celia being the creature at the center of most of their conversations. And the relationship between Ellie and the raptors is explored in a few very interesting scenes, most of which involve the dinosaurs recognizing the kindness that was given to them by the paleontologists and sparing them the bloody fates that would befall certain Biosyn spies. There's even the tragic death of an animal behaviorist who honestly did nothing wrong to the animals. However, due to the fact that she happens to be on the opposite side, she gets a really bad and honestly depressing end. Far before what we saw in Jurassic World and even the John Sayles script was this 1990s comic book story of raptors being trained by Dr. Grant and Dr. Sattler. After having gone over the story myself, I can confirm that there are a lot of similarities between what we see in the newer Jurassic World trilogy and this older comic story, but they of course do have a lot of differences as well. That being said, Celia, Betty, and Alf are without a doubt the first instances of trained velociraptors that we ever got to see in the entire Jurassic Park franchise. And the way in which Dr. Sattler bonds with an injured animal is something that I do think has been carried over into the newer chapters in the film series. Personally, this was a story that I actually did have quite a good time with, even though I will be the first to admit that it is definitely not one of the better stories in the expanded media. But this non-canon adventure did make some pretty big steps forward for the series all the way back in 1993, and I think it should be recognized for that specific trait alone. Anyways, what do all of you guys think about this older comic book story? Do you think that it may have paved the way for some of the ideas in that John Sayles script? And would you say that Trevorrow may have taken some or a lot of interest in it leading into Jurassic World? Whatever your thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Commander Cloud and Karuda Kiyosuke, it means the world to me that you guys appreciate what I do so much, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.